I want to recap all the winter seasons in, like, as many winter seasons as I can get in 20 minutes. And you'll find out in the title how many I could get through. So I want to recap the most recent winter first. What happened? Well, winter started off to an early start in mid-October with a winter storm in the Great Plains. Following this, we have that bomb cyclone in the Northeast Pacific. This bomb cyclone, which was not the same as um, the Northeast, which caused Wanda, wound up bringing a daily precipitation record to Sacramento, and it caused one of the wettest Octobers in California history. This did help put a dent in the drought, as would some more precipitation throughout December. However, unfortunately, it was not able to, you know, kind of overcome the drought. And then 2022 was very dry once the calendar flipped. So drought, as we know, intensified, even though it did briefly get better in the, um, in the, in the final quarter of 2021. It just got so much worse in the first quarter and even the second quarter of 2022. So it's cold. It's like really cold. I'm, you know. So that was in late October. And the storm actually made its way over to the East Coast um, over the Halloween weekend, which dumped three inches of rain over Baltimore and also helped give me a cold. Um, there wasn't anything significant in November. The next significant event was December, and there were two events in mid-December. Both of them were caused by the cold sectors of tornado outbreaks. And you'll see this theme a lot. There were 19 injuries due to 232 car crashes in Minnesota, and heavy snowfall across the Minnesota-Wisconsin area on the winter storm side of the tornado outbreak of December 10th to 11th. This tornado outbreak wound up eclipsing the blizzard in so many ways, though, causing nearly a hundred fatalities, none of them even in the winter storm. They were either due to the tornadoes or wind damage or indirect tornado deaths. This was the one that brought the destructive t tornado across western Kentucky that wound up decimating Mayfield and other communities in western Kentucky. But there were other long-track destructive tornadoes like in Edwardsville, Bowling Green, the one that began in Arkansas and ended right before the Western Kentucky tornado began that was briefly thought to have been one quad state tornado. And the long tracked one that followed just south of the Western Kentucky tornado. And that's just to name a few. The tornado outbreak might have only lasted a day and the destructive part of it only a few hours, but it was. It, it still left its mark in what is considered to be a quiet tornado season. Now this became, since um, record keeping began in 1950, the second deadliest and still is the third deadliest tornado outbreak in the winter month. Deadlier than any tornado outbreak in January and, uh, and became the deadliest in December. That being said, the 1884 Enigma outbreak and... Um, and the 1971 Mississippi Valley tornado outbreak do maintain heavier death tolls and occurred in February. The next was the derecho that, that broke records and became the first December derecho in the U.S. This death toll is a lot lower, which is five. It's seven when you include the fire deaths, but the fire was only indirectly caused by the derecho due to um, 80 plus mile an hour gusts in, in Kansas. That, um, but without the precipitation that the storm brought, this set a record for the most tornadoes in the December outbreak, just five days after it was previously set by the December 10th to 11th tornado outbreak, it was set by this outbreak on December 15th. And it also brought record warm temperatures beforehand, setting state records for the month in Iowa and in Wisconsin, 76 and 72 degrees respectively. This heat wave even extended as far as New York City, where several places in the New York metro area did set, and across New York City, did set record highs for the day. Now, 
Now, on the cold sector, this is December 13th, it wound up bringing a winter storm that would cause about 4,700 power outages in Utah. It would also increase the California snowpack from 18 to 83 percent of normal. And, and after this, throughout into early January, there was a cold wave and a bunch of winter weather events across the Pacific Northwest, but none of them didn't really accumulate that much. In January, though, we had winter storm Frida. Frida was a nasty storm that wound up snarling travel on I-95 in Virginia, bringing it to a complete halt for a full day. The storm did not make it farther north in Philadelphia and Tom's River, basically just because of there being dry air in place over the New York metro area. Although we still had our coldest weather of the winter, obviously it would get colder as the winter progressed. It did, however, dump 15.5 inches of snow in Maryland, and that triggered a car crash that killed three. But there were two other deaths further south in Georgia and Tennessee, bringing the total up to five. This storm cost half a billion dollars in damage. However, we don't know the meteorological hypnosis of this because this is a surprise. Hence why the Wikipedia article doesn't exist for it, and what is mentioned is overly long. Tim Kaine, who was a senator, who was trying to go to Congress, was also trapped amidst the winter storm. Then, on January 7th, another nor'easter came over, Garrett, this time into the northeastern United States. And the impact one is great, but it still dumped 5.8 inches of snow on a city and up to 9.3 inches across Long Island, with... Um, the rule being more snow as you went further east throughout the entire northeast, less snow as you went further west because of the temperatures and whatnot. And the storm did outperform from its expectations. However, it did quickly melt. And that was good because on January 11th, the coldest air in three years came down over the northeastern United States, which um, triggered wind chills into the negative 30s in upstate New York and upper Maine, but even below zero along the I-95 corridor. Due to the fact that the cold front from January 9th and 10th was still working its way in, no records wound up being broken. In order for a record to have been broken, we would have had to have assumed that the high didn't warm up, which was technically possible, but we, but it, that didn't happen because it didn't, it didn't come in as quickly as expected. So like for example where I live wound up having a high of 25 even though in the mid-afternoon it struggled to even get into the 20s at all just because it, was tw it held 25 at midnight. On January 15th after a bit of a warm-up a reinforcing shot of Arctic air dropped temperatures down to um, 10 degrees over New York. The high the day before is 43, so slightly above average. In Syracuse, it'll be 36 the day before, and then that day would have a high of six. Maybe in the city that we can list the high of 21, I'm not sure. It wouldn't get much better. On January 20th, four people froze just 40 feet or 12 meters north of the Canadian border due to negative tw 29 degree wind chills. On January 22nd, a man had to be rescued in Queens due to his lake freezing over. Also on that day, um, Canaan, West Virginia, set an all-time record low of negative 31 degrees, though I believe this still has to be verified. Lopez also got down to negative 16 degrees, and a person froze to death in New York in um, wind chills of negative 12. So, very bad. By, by the end of January, the cold wave stretched as far south as Florida, giving some places daily record lows as temperatures dipped down to 30 degrees in um, either Vail Beach or w West Palm or something like that, and any other place got to 37. It even got to 37 as, as far south as Havana, Cuba on January 31st.
So that was a very extensive cold wave and we had to several winter weather events to go with it. Winter Storm Izzy is one of them that wound up causing five deaths, two in, of them in Canada, and $600 million in damage as it rode up the East Coast, but it took a pretty interior track. So as such, um, you know, Staten Island, for example, saw 2.06 inches of rain as temperatures held 38 or above throughout the event. In, you know, in New York City, we saw an inch of snow, but further inland where they didn't have snow, they had over a foot of snow. Then we had Keenan. Winter Storm Keenan, the January 2022 blizzard, was perhaps the most famous event, causing four deaths due to snow shoveling here on Long Island, some of them in neighboring hamlets, and causing $50 million in damage. It was a, um, you know, it was, a, it was a storm that brought record snow, as a matter of fact, to Boston, because they saw like 23 and a half inches, but parts of Long Island saw over two feet of snow. So, you know, we had, we had that to contend with, as well as dropping temperatures, which increased the snow ratios. However, the snow would quickly melt in early February due to winter storm Landon crossing the country. Landon would wind up killing eight people, one of which due to a tornado in Alabama. The first tornado related death since the night of the tornadoes across Kentucky and surrounding states. The um, February 2022 winter storm, the Landon one, would kill three people due to um, a car pileup in New Mexico or something like that. There were also deaths in Texas and Oklahoma, and there were a lot of deaths everywhere across the country. The storm would also trigger $350 million in damage, and, and um, an extensive power outages. One third of the county that Memphis is in wound up losing power as a result of the storm. The temperature in New York City dropped 16 degrees, in one hour as the front moved through from 54 degrees down to 38 degrees and it would begin to ice up as temperatures would continue to decline throughout the day the front was moved in the city between 7 and 8 a.m where i live it moved through between 8 and 9 a.m and the temperature drop wasn't as extreme from 48 to 37 because the city has the urban heat on and the less winds off the water and whatnot I mean, what do you expect? Then in late February, another cross-country winter storm moved through, causing two deaths, one each in Tennessee and Kentucky, that wound up um, dropping temperatures from near 70 degrees to freezing with ice and snow across the Northeast, though that was actually because of a, an unrelated cold front a few days before. In fact, Bangor even set a new February record with 65 degree temperatures. Bef and then they were two days later contending with um, ice and even a little bit of snow moved through. I actually remember losing power due to the storm, the late February one. Then in early March, we had some, um, we had the March winter storm and cold snap. Not much is known about, but we do know it caused over 100,000 power outages forced a parade cancellation in somewhere in Pennsylvania and triggered a cold snap that brought record cold temperatures even as far south as Florida. Tupelo, Mississippi was predicted to get cold in an Anchorage at 20 versus 22 and Pittsburgh got down to 9 degrees. Thankfully where I live was spared. This was, you know, a rainstorm turned into an ice storm. It was a, it was a bit of a mess. Um, and this is the one in mid-March 2022. I mean, the snow quickly melted, but it even fell as far south as Louisiana in Mississippi, something that's very rare. In late March, a more powerful cold snap moved through the Northeast, and combined with the fact that it made temperatures even colder, plus the fact that it moved through 
in later in the year in mini in meteorological spring this is mostly on march 28th this brought record cold new york city is you know climatologically speaking the least likely of the sites to set a record mainly because they've been through the most stuff but even new york city set a new record um new record high low of 33. this was widespread throughout the northeast dew points got down to zero degrees in similar amounts in Leahy valley despite this a snow squall along i81 um in Shiko county wound up killing six and injuring 24 as a result of the cold snap the record cold was mainly seen in the high temperatures which were largely in the 20s and 30s so hovering around a freezing mark some places in the new york metro area you know laguardia and bridgeport in particular had highs that topped out at 32 exactly so you know if this if this continued itself it would this day would be considered part of a cold wave but it would warm up after this this only happened because an arctic front moved through the night of the 27th and kind of continued working its way on through throughout the 28th because the 29th some places would see you know record record low temperatures like some places in the new york metro area jfk airport set a new record of 24 and two other sites wound up tying them the morning of the 29th however uh, it got better like boston the high i think improved from 33 to 37 on tuesday and severe storms completely ended the cold snap by march 31st this was March's third significant tornado outbreak, the one of the 29th to 31st. After a bit of a hiatus, winter weather returned in the April 2022 North American storm complex. Breaking records for how much April snow could fall, it dumped up to 47 inches of snow in Pony, Montana. One person was killed in North Dakota, where there were extensive road closures. This also brought a cold wave, bringing temp record cold temperatures of 11 degrees in Denver, uh, 7 degrees in Elko, 32 in Seattle, which might have even been a monthly record. There, I think there was a monthly, tied a monthly cold record high of, um, of 44 in Seattle for April. Then Portland saw their latest snow in the count, latest accumulating snow in the calendar year on record as a result of this. Um, trying to think, Seattle, um, it was... Maybe it tied the record low, and maybe the actual record low was set in Olympia, which hit 28 or 30. I don't know. But it, it, was, it was cold nonetheless. It was a cold wave and a winter storm in one. Then a few days later, on April 19th, the Nor'easter moved through. This dumped 2.09 inches of snow in New York City, causing I-87 um, in the Bronx to flood. But it brought significant snow inland that even caused the NWS office in Boston to lose power for three and a half hours. Over 200,000 customers in New York alone lost power. When you think that the snow would be over, Denver wound up going from 88 degrees to snow in 24 hours. I think it was just 86, but it was still significant. They dropped from 85 to 59 in 23 minutes, as a matter of fact. And the temperature continued to decline there until significant snow fell. While well, Denver only saw 2.3 inches, several places saw over a foot with, with record-breaking amounts, or close to a foot, in Montana and Colorado. Following this, record cold were tied or set. Denver at 31, Cheyenne on the 22nd um, at somewhere in the mid-20s. I think Denver's record was May 21st. Before weather finally began to improve. But Cheyenne had their coldest second half of May since 1950 as a result of the um, winter storm. And when you expect all that to be over, a man froze to death through the hypothermia while hiking in Maine in mid-June with temperatures dipping below freezing across parts of the Northeast. While not in a Wikipedia article, LaGuardia did tie their daily record low on June 19th at 56 degrees. Keep in mind, it, it it, it got to the upper 80s and 90s just two days beforehand. And yet, here you have winter events in late June. 
and that was just one winter. Okay, this video is clearly going to be more than um, 20 minutes <laughs> because we have the 2020 to 2021 winter to talk about now. Oh God, where do we begin? Well, this begins with Winter Storm Billy. Winter Storm Billy was the Oklahoma City ice storm. Two people died, one in Texas and one in Kansas. It caused $125 million in damage. 400,000 customers wound up losing power. And this was, you know, a very unseasonably early ice storm for them. Then this merged with Hurricane Zeta, a Category 2 hurricane, a Category 3 hurricane, excuse me, that struck Louisiana and brought destructive impacts as far up as Virginia. This then merged with Billy to wind up causing a bit, a bit of a cold snap and winter storm. Snow got up to six and a half inches across the area in the Hurricane Zeta snow event with um, across New England, but some mountains in New Jersey even managed to see over two inches of snow. Following this, parts of New Jersey get down to 20, and as a matter of fact, um, Albany gets down to 19 degrees. The high that there would be um, would be in the low 40s. It would be unseasonably cold that day. Although conditions were gradually improving to the beginning parts of November. November actually remained um, relatively quiet until the end of the month when there was a storm complex spawning five tornadoes and causing $100 million in damage and 100,000 power outages kind of as it moved up the area, but it did bring some snowy impacts too, um, kind of on the west side of it. Then in early December, another winter storm moved up that caused 280,000 power outages. This one brought heavy snow into the like Massachusetts area, but it only caused $25 million in damage. Then we had the one in mid-December. This kind of ended uh, an over thousand day significant snow drought in the Northeast. Some parts of the southern tier got 44 inches of snow. Vermont possibly set, um, saw a record-breaking winter storm in this event. This winter storm on December 16th would often be compared to, to how unseasonally mild the weather was on December 16th, 2021. Indeed, it was quite a contrast. But this is in 2021, this is 2020, so we do have to talk about the winter storm that dumped 10.5 inches of snow upon New York City, 11.7 on Boston, but as you move further southwest, the accumulation was significant, but less. So the storm, you know, you know, it wasn't like the classic Norista where it has to track over a certain bullseye to bring the most snow. It just kind of, it tracked what tracked because it did bring some significant snow into inland areas. Then in around Christmas week, another nor'easter moved through. Now, in the Northeast, it's actually brought record warm weather and some of the wettest days on record. New York City did not set a record, but it still got to around 60 degrees before the temperature tumbled and it wound up making it back down to freezing at night after getting um, to 49 degrees at noon. So it was a bit of a turbulent weather day. There were heavy wind gusts um, in the 50s and 60s and miles an hour across the city. You know, further north, the temperature crash didn't happen, you know, quite as soon. But this did also bring snowy impacts. Then, um, then, and this caused $340 million in damage. Then New Year's Eve winter storm moved through that caused the person to die, I think, in a car crash in Missouri. It caused that death, 119,000 power outages, $35 million in damage. And, and you know, it's kind of that second storm to move through, through in a short period of time. Two people died in $525 million in damage was caused by a winter storm that moved through the Pacific Northwest that year. And then we have February. But there was this kind of late January cold snap across the Northeast before Orlina came, which actually exacerbates impacts. New York City saw about 15 inches of snow. Boston saw only one to three, because it then began to mix with rain, despite Boston only being a degree warmer than New York City. 
As a result, seasonal snowfall across New York and Boston wound up tying at 38.6 inches, which is rare because usually Boston sees more snow. Boston snow was below normal and New York snow was well above normal. This failure will become the eighth snowy sun record, but two inches of snow would fall in January. So I think that 14.8 was only on February 1st, so there was probably more like 17 inches of snow when it all comes together. So New York City kind of then began to become the bullseye. There was more snow and in more, in more inland amounts, but along the coast, New York City became the bullseye for the heaviest snow. This would, a week before, cause flooding that cost $1.75 billion in energy in California, and now this is the Nor'easter. In total, this would cause seven deaths and $1.85 billion in damage. Now, because this was last winter, I'm going to be a bit more shady on some of the stuff, which is going to lead to quicker time. So you'll probably actually be happy about that because it won't be going in as grueling detail anymore. Then we had the Super Bowl Sunday Nor'easter that would dump about um, four half inches of snow in the city. This time the snow would be more in the New England area, as you would expect. <sighs> so then, after that, we get to the, um, the catastrophic February cold wave and winter storms. This is when, if you mention the, that winter, your first thoughts are probably going to be on this. So I do need to um, pretty significantly document what happened. So what happened was, was there was, there was this bit of a, um, there was this bit of a um, polar vortex that began to come down. This brought really cold temperatures in parts of Nunavut that got down to negative 61 degrees or so. The, this would also tie an all-time record low in Saskatchewan City of negative 48.9 Celsius or negative 56.0 Fahrenheit. The cold wave would continue to descend. Temperatures did get into the negative 50s in the United States. Fayetteville, Arkansas at about negative 29 and Hastings, Nebraska at negative 34 set all-time record lows due to the storm um, and due to the cold wave. The cold wave would even penetrate as far south as Texas, giving Dallas and Houston some of the coldest days on record at negative 12, 2 and 12. Negative 2 and 12. This would then come with winter storm early, which would dump about half a foot-ish of snow across the area. What happens next is kind of sad. Because what happened next was, was that um, the winter storm and, and the cold wave caught, put a strain on Texas power grid. At first, they mitigated this problem by using rolling blackouts. However, the rolling blackouts proved ineffective and the power grid still collapsed anyway. This power grid collapse was catastrophic as it caused hundreds of deaths. The exact death toll isn't known and may never be known, and about $200 billion in damage. This power grid collapse, which would be exacerbated by Viola 2, which caused 29 deaths and $2 billion in damage, it would cause millions of people to wind up losing power as a result of these storms. Before, there's an ice storm that was also in the Texas area, caused 12 deaths, six of them due to a car crash at 6.30 in the morning on February 10th, and like the Dallas area, so morning rush hour commute, think that. Um, and it also killed two people, I believe, in Kentucky. It also caused an airline to, to slide off a runway, but there, were, but there were no deaths or injuries due to that. So what happened was that the power grid collapsed and due to all this. You know, people froze to death, pipes burst and flooded. People were left without power for weeks. I mean, it was eventually restored by the end of February, but it was still really catastrophic. And something like this hasn't really happened before. We have had deadlier winter storms, but those are due to like the wide ranging winter storms that cause destructive impacts in all sorts of areas or the winter storms that, um, that you know, that didn't, um, that didn't, you know, have as good forecasting for them. 
but something like this happening in 2021 really came as a surprise. This was well forecasted, but what wasn't known was how weak the Texas power grid was. And this put some serious, um, casted light on some serious flaws in the Texas power system grid. Viola would also, um, and, and OA would also dump significant snow in PNW, which, which caused some power outages there. Viola, in particular, dumped 4.4 inches of snow on the city, which, um, which wound up, um, which wound up, you know, making our uh, snow total be the eighth snow total on record. It helped bring Philadelphia exactly at their seasonal average, and I don't think they had any more snow after that, despite it being February 19th. The day it was only like a trace. March was pretty quiet, though there was a cold wave in the um, New England area that brought wind chills high as low as 5 degrees in some areas. Mount Washington saw a wind chill get down to negative 80 due to winds of 114 miles an hour, so Category 3 hurricane force winds, as well as air temperatures of negative 27 degrees. And it was that combination that produced such a bone-chilling wind chill. Later on in March, we had a winter storm across the Denver area. It would bring 21 tornadoes in the Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas area and give Denver one of the biggest March snowfalls and actually one of the biggest snowfalls on record period because there was like 27 inches of snow there. Then there'll be six plus inches of snow in the Texas area which wound up causing injuries due to car crashes as, as a result of a tornado outbreak that wound up becoming a St. Patrick's Day tornado outbreak that kind of um, was this like mo marginal notability tornado outbreak that got 50 to that brought 50 tornadoes, 25 of them in Alabama. And, hmm, you know, um, it only brought EF2 tornadoes though. There was a non-tornado fatality, but it was not winter weather related. And it w was in Mississippi. There were six tornado injuries. Finally, in April 2021, there was a um, nor'easter that dumped about a half foot of snow in some areas across Upper New England. Um, it only brought like 0.8 inches of rain in the city, though. And thankfully, that was it that winter. There was no um, there was no crazy stuff going on in May or June. And yes, it is a little bit sad that I have to mention June. Probably the last winter I can mention in this video is 2019-2020's winter. That winter was pretty quiet. There was, however, a November cold wave that wound up setting um, records for, you know, daily records as well as for the records coldest so early in the season. It broke a lot of records from the Great Blue Norther of 1911 as it came down on those exact dates, but some records remain intact. New York City set back-to-back -back record lows due to this, with it being, um, with, with, a, with a record low being 26 degrees, or 25 degrees on the 12th and 23 on the 13th. This kind of mimicked what happened two years earlier in a cold wave, where New York City wound up um, 25 and 24 on the 10th and 11th of November 2017. That winter was rather turbulent, but we can't exactly go into it. There was the, um, there was the, um, there was that going on. It wound up bringing the first half of, for coldest first half of November across portions of Illinois, Indiana, and Montana, which were the harshest effect. Because some places saw their coldest temperatures so early into the season. which is unfortunate. Um, we didn't get hit quite, quite that hard, but nonetheless, we did get hit somewhat hard by the cold wave, as did pretty much everywhere else in the area did. So hmm, there's not that much more to say about it. Then there was the November 26th to December 3rd cross country with the storm. Four tornadoes in the Phoenix area wound up causing $245,000 in damage. They were all weak. Um, the heaviest impacts were in the West, so like California, Arizona, 
uh, that kind of area. Though I'm not exactly sure if any snow fell, it was really just rain there. Some place in that area did see a foot of snow. It cost 8,000 pounds in the New York metro area due to snow, however. December, wouldn't really see anything. There, were, there would be this kind of January and February brief cold snaps. There was a winter storm that would dump a sort of 114 inches of snow across areas of the Sierra Nevada in mid-March. But the impact only stood as far as Denver, where they for, where 4,000 flights to be canceled. Following this, there was a cold wave in early May. Some places set or tied their all-time record lows for May. And several other places like New York City saw those daily records. 12 inches of snow fell in some parts of Vermont, and New York City tied with 1977 for their latest trace on record. However, unlike 1977, it didn't become a full-out blizzard in parts of New England, even though, again, a foot of snow did fall in some places. This early May cold wave um, actually began to persist into May 12th. So that's when the records kind of stopped. But May 9th was the epicenter of the cold wave, mainly because the Arctic hunt moved through, you know, May 8th. Temperatures were brought down to record lows of 34 across the city. Some places were even hit freezing. Um, I believe LaGuardia 34 set an all-time May record, and JFK tied theirs at 36. So, you know, that was interesting. I do want to make a note, even though it's not a Wikipedia article, it was in the Weather 2019 article. While November 2019 was slightly above average in Idaho, they did see their coldest October on record. How it wasn't really in the winter, but there was this kind of cold pattern that set up in October across, you know, southwest Idaho and southeast Oregon. But the way it, it was set up in Idaho, I guess, made it so that it balanced out to be their coldest day, um, October on record. And while it was very cold October for Oregon, it wasn't their all-time coldest on record. Okay, I actually can talk about the 2018-2019 winter in minor detail, except I'm not going to because I'm exhausted. So, goodbye.